NASCAR is a grand old pastime. Companies get to express themselves creatively by giving an identity to every car on the racetrack. Once a company gives this identity, 43 cars roar around the track in a rainbow blur. Over the past 30 years, NASCAR has made a ton of changes. Some because NASCAR made the decision, others because of fate. My name is Griffin, but I'm called Griff Dog on YouTube. My goal is to make a positive difference in the world. My passion is NASCAR. My goal is to put NASCAR in a spot where they can thrive without worry. My goal with this new series is to show everyone why NASCAR is a beautiful sport. I am going back and redoing several events. I will show the timeline of events that will happen if these changes occur. We will start in 1987. Hence, this is where we will initiate one more spark. To begin this timeline, let's start with Tim Richmond. After the NASCAR banquet in 1986, Richmond fell ill and missed the beginning of the 1987 season. He tested positive for AIDS. My first what if in this timeline will be what if Tim Richmond was always healthy. I have Richmond running the whole season and beyond. The only effect this has is Benny Parsons. He drove a green number 35 Folgers car for the 1987 season. He originally replaced Tim Richmond, but I decided that both cars will race that year. Tim Richmond will continue to drive the 25 car for Rick Hendrick. Benny Parsons drives the 35 car for one more year. He will call retirement at the end of the 1988 season. Finally, where is Ken Schrader? He is in the 90 June Dunleavy car. Other notable changes include Richmond International Raceway transforming from a half mile short track to the three quarter mile track we all know and love today. Finally, this is the inaugural year for Phoenix International Raceway. That track takes the second to last race on the schedule. My second what if covered in this series will be what if Riverside never went away. In this version of 1989, I have Riverside as the 10th race on the schedule, right after Talladega and before Charlotte's All-Star Race. This track does not replace any other track, putting the number of races up to 30 where it will stay for the next 4 years. The other track change belongs to Sonoma. Sonoma takes Riverside's old spot between Dover and Pocono. Beautiful track that's also in California. In terms of driver changes, Richmond is still in the 25 car, Ken Schrader is still in the 90 car, and Chad Little, who originally drove the 90 car, did some races in the Bush series for his family's team. The only difference on the schedule is that Riverside moves up to the fourth race in the season, fit between Rockingham and Atlanta. Now my third what if I will tackle in this series will be what if Neil Bonnet was healthy. In real life at the first Darlington race, Bonnet was in a life threatening crash. He decided to retire from racing and went to broadcasting for a while. He did some racing later for Richard Childress Racing and later passed away in a practice crash for the 1994 Daytona 500. In this series, Neil Bonnet signs on to drive the 31 car for the full season for Richard Childress Racing. This lets Dale Jarrett drive the 21 car. Other changes include Tim Richmond is still in the 25 car, Ken Schrader is still in the 90 car, Arnie Irvin drove the 4 car for the full season. Buddy Baker retired, and Phil Parsons made some attempts with other lower budget teams. What if number 4 deals with Rob Moroso? In real life, Moroso had a successful 1989 Bush season, but in 1990 he moved up to the Cup Series and struggled. 
Unfortunately, he ended up passing away by driving under the influence and crashing another driver at excess of speeds on a road near his hometown in North Carolina. What if that never happened? So, I have him in the number 20 car for 1991. Bobby Hillen drove for other teams. Bonnet is still in the 31 car for Richard Childress Racing. Richmond is in the 25 car and Schrader is still racing the 90 car. Other notable notes include Wally Dollabach competed in his final year at the SCCA and Robbie Gordon did not race in Cup until 1992. No changes were made to the schedule. One final note, JD McDuffie is still alive but he is not a what if because when he did pass away he was at a fairly older age. And so, I have him retiring at the end of the 1991 season from the Cup Series. He does do lower series like Featherlight and the Southwest Series. The least amount of changes from year to year would be from 91 to 92. No noticeable changes to the schedule. Richmond continues to drive the 25 car. Bonnet is in the 31 car still. Rob Moroso is still in the 20 car, and Ken Schrader is still in the 90 car. Other noticeables include, Charlie Glotzbach did retire after 1991, Kerry Teague raced ARCA for himself, Hutch Strickland drove the 12 car for Bobby Allison, and Bobby Hillen drove for Martin Berain. Also, Richard Petty still retires after the 1992 season. One new track was added to the schedule, and that is Loudoun, New Hampshire. That race is placed between Daytona and Pocono. Otherwise, nothing new is to the schedule. The 5th and 6th and 7th what ifs are here. And if you're a diehard NASCAR fan, you know what I'm talking about. What if Alan Kowicki and Davey Allison were still alive? The seventh what if relates to Davy's brother, Clifford Allison. What if he was still alive as well? In case you didn't know, Alan Kowicki and Davy Allison both passed away in 1993 from separate plane crashes. Meanwhile, Clifford Allison died in a practice crash at Michigan in 1992 in the Bush series. In this series, Clifford Allison would run a full Bush season in 1993 before starting Cup in 1994. Alan Kowicki and Davey Allison would race the full 1993 season as planned. Also, Richmond is in the 25, Schrader is in the 90, Bobby Hillen drives the 9 for Harry Melling, Bonnet is in the 31 for Childress, Moroso is still in the 20 car, Jeff Bodine did drive the 15 car for the full season. Other things to note, Chad Little did more Bush races, Greg Sachs drove the 68 country time car in the first Atlanta race, and PJ Jones did a full season in the Winston West series for himself. Also, since Jimmy Hensley never drove the 7 car because Kawicki is still alive, Hensley drove the 52 car for Jimmy Means for all but one race, that being Watkins Glen. Scott Gaylord drove that car. Also, Mike Skinner did not race Cup in 1993. Since Davy Allison is still alive, Robbie Gordon never raced a 28 car. Lake Speed drove for his own team. Arnie Irvin, which we'll talk about later, finished a 93 season in the 4 car. And finally, Purvis drove for James Finch at only the restrictor plate tracks. Finally, Joe Nemechek raced in Bush Series the entire 1993 season. What if number 8 talks about Arnie Irvin? In case you didn't know, Arnie Irvin had a near career ending crash at Michigan in 1994. However, I say near because he came back in 1995 and raced for a few more full years. In 1999, Arnie had another severe crash at Michigan again for the Bush Series. 
After this second crash, Arnie Irvin retired from NASCAR and never looked back. What if number 8 asks, what if neither of those wrecks happened? So, in 1994, Sterling Marlin moved to the number 4 car like normal. Arnie Irvin moves to a second Robert Yates team, bringing Napa United with to the new number 88 Ford Thunderbird. He is teammates with Davey Allison. Alec Wickey is still in the 7 Hooters Ford Underbird for himself. Jeff Bodine, who originally drove the 7 car in 1994, added a 0 to the end to make it 70. Jeff still drove for his own team. The other big note is that Indianapolis Motor Speedway does make its debut in NASCAR in 1994. Nothing has changed about that, except making the schedule 32 races now. Other notes include, Bonnet is still in the 31 car, but because of that, the Hardys team switched from 31 to 13. Ramoroso is in the 20 car, Tim Richmond is in the 25 car, and Ken Schrader is still hanging on to the 90 car for June Dunleavy. Bobby Hillen drives the 44 car for the majority of the season. Clifford Allison makes his rookie debut in the 84 Lumber 84 car for the Stavola brothers. Finally, Loy Allen Jr. struggled to find sponsors for his 19 team. No new changes added to the schedule. Not much changed in drivers either. Richmond is in the 25 Budweiser Chevrolet. Schrader is still in the 90 car. Mike Wallace did a full season in the Bush series for Barry Owen. Neil Bonin was in the 31 car. The 13 Hardys car lasted one more season. Alan Kowicki is in the 7 Hooters car. The 27 car struggled to find sponsors with Elton Sawyer behind the wheel. Jeff Bodine was in the 70X side Ford. Davey Allison drove the 28 Ford. Ernie Irvin stays in the 88 Napa Ford. Dale Jarrett signs a long-term contract with Joe Gibbs. He stays in the 18 car. Where does Bobby Labonte go? He teams up with James Finch to drive the new number 51 Best Western Chevrolet. That team attempted the whole season. Jeff Purvis, who also drove for Finch, still makes his attempts at the Super Speedway tracks. Finally, Rob Moroso is still with the 20 team, but by Dick Moroso, his father, and Clifford Allison is still in the 84 ride. Once again, nothing new to the schedule, but here are the driver changes. First of all, the big news is that at 50 years old, Neil Bonnet calls this year his final year behind the 31 car. He will step aside from racing and do broadcasting. This will make room for Mike Skinner. Skinner made a few starts in the 13 Realtree car for Richard Childress. Next, here is what if number 9 comes to play. This was hidden, but some wonderful people showed me him. What if Casey Elliott raced in the Cup Series? Casey is Bill Elliott's nephew. Casey was diagnosed with cancer. He passed away in 1996. It was said that he would be great in NASCAR. Why not give him that shot? He makes his rookie attempt in the number 92 Super 8 Motel Ford for Bill Elliott's team. Other notes include, Richmond is still in the 25 car. Trader is in his final year in the 90 car. Dick Trickle, Mike Wallace, and Loy Allen Jr. share the 19 car. Alan Kowicki is still in the 7 car. Jeff Bodine is in the 70 QVC Ford. Rick Mass found Delco as a new sponsor. Davey Allison is in the 28 car. Arnie Irvin is in the 88 car with Quality Care as his new sponsor. Dale Jarrett is in the 18 car. Bobby Labonte is in the 51 car still. Rob Moroso is in the 20 car. Clifford Allison is in the 84 car. And finally, Jeremy Mayfield stays in the 98 car full time for Kale Yarbrough. Andretti stays in the 37 ride. Nineteen ninety seven is a big year for the what if. What if number ten says 
What if NASCAR never left North Wilkesboro? NASCAR left North Wilkesboro for bigger markets in California and Texas. In this series, North Wilkesboro retains one race on the schedule, keeping the place that would have gone to the second New Hampshire race. NASCAR will still go to California and Texas as planned. In terms of driver changes, Tim Richmond is still in the 25 car. Ricky Craven, who was supposed to go to the 25 car in real life, is taking a wait year. Like for example, in 2011 in real life, Casey Kane went to Red Bull before going to Hendrick Motorsports. What happened here is that Ricky Craven went over to Bud Moore's 15 team and brought Ray Bresta Swift as a sponsor. Larry Pearson didn't attempt a cup race in 1997. Alan Kowicki is still in the 7 car. Jeff Bodine is in the 70 QVC Ford. Davey Allison is still in the 28 car. Arnie Irvin is in the 88 car. Dale Jarrett is still in the 18 car. Jeremy Mayfield is still in the 98 car. And John Andretti is in the 37 car. Casey Elliott returns to the 92 car in 1997. Clifford Allison does return to the 84 car. 84 Lumber left and Circuit City came aboard to sponsor that both cars, him and the 8 car of Hutch Strickland, for 8 races. But Allison needed more sponsorship. Balavani returns to the 51 car. Rob Moroso is in the 20 car. Since Rob is in the number 20, Greg Sachs' number changed from 20 to 32. Sachs still attempts the same races though. Finally, Joe Nemechek stays in the 87 Burger King ride for himself. I'll explain why later. Another big year for the what if. If you didn't know already, one of the big goals for One More Spark is to give tracks a spotlight they never got. This will be a common theme that will commence in 1998. I decided that this is the year the Cup Series starts racing at Nazareth Speedway in Pennsylvania. This track replaces the second Pocono race on the schedule. Also as normal, Las Vegas makes their Cup debut as well. Right now, 34 races are on the schedule. Lots happen in terms of roster changes as well. Let's talk about the biggest one. And this will be what if number 12. What if Tim Steele raced in the Cup Series? According to my research, Tim Steele was supposed to move up to the Cup Series in 1998. With the help of Bud Moore and Brett Favre, Green Bay Packers quarterback of the NFL, Steele would have sponsorship from both Nike and Sony. But because of a test crash in late 1997, that never happened. But what if it did? This year, Steele will make his debut in the Cup Series driving the number 48 Nike Sony Ford Taurus. Tim switches to the 48 to give himself a new identity. The other big news is that Ricky Craven moves over to the Budweiser Chevrolet. Where does Tim Richmond go? To the new number 12 Mobile One Ford created by Roger Penske. Jeremy Mayfield continues to drive the 98 car for Kale Yarbrough. Also as a side note, Greg Sachs and Rich Bickle drove the 35 Tabasco car, since Todd Bodine focused in the Bush series, and Daryl Waltrip drove the 17 car. Daryl never replaced Steve Park in the 1 car because Park never had his hard crash at Atlanta. Other things to note, Alan Kowicki is still in the 7 Hooters car, Jeff Budine has a new sponsor with Phillips. Davey Allison is in the 28 car. Arnie Irvin is still in the 88 car. And so if that's the case, what happens to the 36? It is still driven by Derek Cope. So who drives the 30 car? Well, that belongs to Clifford Allison. Stavola brothers could not afford to have a second team, so Clifford left and moved to the 30 ride. Dale Jarrett is in the 18. Bobby Labonte is still in the 51, and as a side note, Jeff Purvis drove a 14 Lance Nass car for the Super Speedway races. Final notes, Casey Elliott is still in the 92 car, Moroso is in the 20 car, and finally, Kenny Irwin Jr., superstar from the truck series, 
moves over to the new 42 Bell South Chevrolet for Felix Sabata's in the Cup Series. And finally, in a new paint scheme, Joe Nemechek drives for himself in the number 87 Burger King Chevrolet. Two new tracks are added to the schedule. The first one is a big one. What if the Milwaukee Mile is placed in the Cup Series? I have that race replacing Michigan in 1999. And this race is just as big as Indy was in 1994. The other change to the schedule this year is that Homestead's flat 1.5 mile track makes its appearance through the Cup Series. This track is the second to last race in the season before Atlanta. Everything else is the same. Now, let's talk about the next what if. Chris Trickle was Dick Trickle's nephew. He competed in the Featherlight Southwest Tour. He was scheduled to race in the Truck Series in 1997, but on February 9th in a Las Vegas suburb, Trickle was on the freeway, driving to a lighted tennis court to hang out with his friends. As he drove, another car drove alongside and fired shots into his car. A bullet did hit Chris Trickle's head. He survived for 409 days, but died from complications of his wounds on March 25th, 1998. What if Chris Trickle is still alive and made it to the Cup Series? He didn't attempt many races in 1999, but he drove the 59 Hollywood Video car. Other notable notes, Richmond is still in the 12 Mobile One car, Jeremy Mayfield is still in the 98 car 4 Cale Yarbrough, Rick Mass is the primary driver of the 58 Hollywood car, he was a big trainer for Chris Trickle. Alan Quickie is in the 7 car, Michael Waltrip moves over to the 70 Phillips ride while Jeff Bodine hangs out at the 60 ride for Joe Bessie. Davey Allison is in the 28. Arnie Irvin is in the 88, Derek Cope is in the 36, Clifford Allison is still in the 30, Dale Jarrett is in the 18, Bobby Labonte is in the 51, Ricky Craven is in the 25, and Wally Dollabak splits the 75 ride with Ted Musgrave. Casey Elliott is still in the 92, and Tim Steele is in the 48 car. Kenny Irwin Jr. is in the 42 car, and Nemechek is still in the 87 car. The last big change is Ricky Rudd and Rob Moroso. Both of them needed more funding to keep their teams afloat, so they merged. Moroso Rudd Racing rebranded themselves. Moroso got support from Mountain Dew, while Ricky Rudd is still sponsored by Tide. The 82 and 83 teams are now a thing. Here we have the next four what ifs. Two of them I got a feeling you would know, but let's start with the odd one out. You remember Chicago Motor Speedway? Yeah, the one mile odd track that was made before Chicago Land Speedway. What if everyone decided to commit to Chicago instead of Chicago Land? In 2000, Chicago gets a place on the schedule as the 27th race on the schedule. Now, the next what if will be what if Kenny Irwin Jr. was still alive? Kenny would get more experience in the 42 car and thus he would have know what to do to prevent the incident that killed him in the New Hampshire practice. So Kenny Aaron does attempt every race in the 2000 season. Finally, the other what if is what if Adam Petty is still alive, the whole reason this whole series got started. Adam attempted 5 total races in 2000. He is set and ready to go to compete for a rookie of the year in 2001. Other notes, Tim Richmond is in the 12 car. Cale Yarbrough's team does not fold, so a bonus what if. Jeremy Mayfield continues to drive the 98 car with RC Cola as the sponsor. The 86 truck is still sponsored by RC Cola as well. Ken Schrader does move over to the 36 car like normal. Alan Kowicki is in the 7 Hooters car. Michael Waltrip has a new sponsor with Nation's Rent. Davey Allison is in the 28. Arnie Irvin is in the 88. Dale Jarrett is in the 18 still, Casey Elliott is in the 92, Tim Steele is in the 48, and it is noted in this series that Nike is a huge sponsor for the Sydney Olympics. So for the first half of the season, Tim Steele drove a special Olympics car. Ricky Craven is in the 25 car, Chris Trickle attempts his first full season in the 50 Midwest car, Moroso and Rudd are still in the 82 and 83 Mountain Dew and Tide Fords, Bobby Labonte is still in the 51 car, and Clifford Allison returns to the 30 car with Spears as a sponsor. Finally, where is Jerry Nadu? The last What If in 2000 is a little nostalgic and special. I have decided. 
What if Nickelodeon sponsored a cup car? Nickelodeon sponsors the new PPI Racing team driven by Jury Nadu. And yes, Jury Nadu betrayed Cartoon Network and went to Nick. What Nick plans to do is have a generic car for the 2000 season and then every season afterward promote a show for that year, something special as I grew up with Nickelodeon. 2001 will be the final year I'll cover for now since season one of One More Spark will be 2001. Kansas is on the schedule as normal. Chicago takes the spot Chicago Land would be, and that is it schedule-wise for 2001. In terms of roster changes, I will hit on two more what-ifs, those being Tony Roper and John Nemechek, Joe's little brother. Tony Roper died in a crash in the truck series in 2000 at Texas. The simple question is, what if Tony was still alive? Jeff Bodine was released from Joe Bessie's team and Tony Roper will attempt the whole season with TrackPhone as the sponsor. John Nemechek died also in a truck crash but it was in 1997 and it was at Homestead. Now, word has it that Homestead changed its configuration because of the death of John Nemechek. In this series, Homestead is still configured because the people behind the move believe racing will be more competitive. As for John's career, John Nemechek raced trucks full-time from 97 through 99. Also in 99, whatever races Joe Nemechek was not driving the 87 Bell South car in the Bush series, John would. In 2000, John drove the entire Bush season. Now in 2001 for Joe's team, John is up for Rookie of the Year. Right now, the plan for John is to run all but the road courses. Ron Fellows is prepared to drive those. But if John Nemechek is strong enough, he will attempt every race. Other notable roster changes for 2001 are as so. Alan Kowicki is in the 7 Hooters car still. Chris Trickle in the 50 Midwest car. Tim Richmond with a brand new paint scheme is back in the 12 car. Dale Jarrett is in the 18 car. Casey Elliott moves over with Bill Elliott to Ray Everham's new team. Casey Atwood will do one more year in the Bush Series, driving the 27 Castrol GTX car, before declaring for the Cup Series. Ricky Craven is in the 25 car. Davey Allison returns for another season in the 28 Ford. Clifford Allison returns to the 30 team. All Pro will sponsor the car for the first three races, but it is unsure if that team will continue after that. Jury Nadu returns to the Nickelodeon ride, and Invader Zim is the new show promoted on the car. Kenny Irwin Jr. will drive the 42 car for Chip Ganassi. Singular comes aboard to sponsor the car. Now as for Jason Leffler. Leffler is a development driver over at Joe Gibbs Racing. He will do one more year in number 18 MBNA Pontiac. He will move up to the Cup Series with Gibbs in 2002. Number and sponsor have not been announced yet. Kyle Petty will continue to drive the 44 car with Georgia Pacific. Bookshot Jones is in the Bush Series in the double zero car. Adam Petty will make his rookie debut in the 45 Sprint Dodge. And yes, Dodge is back in 2001. Bobby Labonte returns to the 51 Chevrolet. Mike Wallace will attempt the full season in the 70 Nations Rent car. Arnie Irvin returns to the 88 with UPS as the new sponsor. Ron Moroso and Ricky Rudd return to their Mountain Dew and Tide Fords. Tim Steele is back in the 48 car. And finally, Jeremy Mayfield returns with Kale Yarbrough in the 98 RC Cola car. And then, of course, is the return of an old friend. Lots of changes are coming, but that's what happens when you get ideas. They affect other aspects of life, and then we get this whole new universe. So a couple of notes before I end this episode. The way I'm going to go about this series is that each season gets seven videos or episodes. Episode 1 talks about speed weeks for that year and will show the Daytona 500 in its entirety. Episodes 2 and 3 cover the first half of the season. Episodes 4, 5, and 6 will cover the second half of the season. 
and episode 7 will be a Thrills and Spills style year in review music video. I will do this every year from 1987 to today. I will not go chronologically, however. I will start with 2001, then I will go back to 1987, then up to 2000, then back to 1988, etc. until 2000 is done, which should be done after 2014. The reason I'm doing all the races is because I will not purposefully screw over one driver or team. I will let the season play out as fairly as possible. But if a team is not doing well, I might have to make some regrettable decisions. Also, as a former statistician, I love numbers. I plan to give you guys that are statisticians as many different stats as possible. So I will not pull a number out of my butt and say, for example, Ramoroso gets 28 wins in his career. I don't know if he will get that many wins, but with the help of NR2003, we can find out. I will run each race at about 12% of the total length. Cars will make at least a pit stop for now. I will put an asterisk by that because if there is a track built in NR2003 that is not good with pit stops, I will not put these cars through that hell. The reason for 12% is because I am not going to utilize overtime. If a caution comes out with a few laps to go, the race would technically reach its end length, which I plan to be is about 10%. But I'll also have it where if a caution comes out with like 6 laps to go, we can restart then with a 3, 2, or 1 lap dash. And one big thing that will help too is that we will always race back to the line. So you will see few BS judgmental calls, if any. Finally, my goal is to make this series as realistic as possible, paint scheme wise. Huge credit to everyone at NN Racing and Sim Racing Design for creating numerous paint schemes for this series. If I see that no one has created a specific paint scheme for a certain race, and if it's really, really necessary, for example, the Jurassic Park 3 paint schemes, I will paint those myself. Finally, all paint schemes I create will be available in a link in the description tab below each video. For example, for this video, each car you see in this video that I painted will be available in the description tab below. I would like to note that some of the cars up for download are the same car that someone else painted except the driver's signature has changed. For example, all 28 cars are the originals except Davy's signature is on there. The reason for this was because I never planned for that paint scheme to change. And so of course I will give credit as best as possible since I did not paint those cars. So anyway, thank you to all the original painters of those cars. Thank you to those who created the tracks that will be used in this series. And most importantly, thank you for inspiring me to start this series. It will be long, it will be tough, but it will be doable. So if you guys have any questions on anything I mention, first of all, please watch the video just to see if your question is answered in the actual video. And then also check the comment section first to see if I answered someone else's question that's related to yours. If not, please type in the comment section down below and I will answer as best as possible. I am only human, I am only one person, and I may miss something that someone else will probably catch. Ladies and gentlemen, this is One More Spark.